prepare ourselves in our hearts and our minds, Father, in preparation of keeping your great and awesome feast, which will soon be upon us, Father. We thank you for all things you've given to us, and as, as we rehearse these words of our great overseer that you've inspired to, for him to write for us, Father, for our learning, that you will help us to remember these things and grow. But we do ask and pray these things in Yeshua's name. Hallelujah, Yahweh. Praise Yahweh. Please be seated, men. We are in the May 2010 issue of the prophetic word. And it starts off, and this is a black and white copy, but it starts off about uh, Pentecost, the shadow of protection. And in here, Pastor writes, my dear friends, the worst time of trouble ever in the history of mankind's existence, okay, is prophesied for this time period that you will experience. It's very soon now, he says, it includes numerous earthquakes that have already started to increase as you can see from the information below now here's a chart here mm, zoom in there but it shows you here wow it shows you the oops, that's okay. anyway you can see how it, how it goes up this is from the year 1973 on up to the year 2006 and you can see how it just goes up so it's much higher here than it was there okay so we know that there was an increase and this is exactly what Yeshua said so you know everything that Yeshua taught about the last days being here we can definitely see these things because everything that the prophet spoke about is taking place in our day and that's the thing is that people can talk about you know, even the scripture warns you about people saying, oh, these things took place long ago and so forth, you know, and, and uh, they did. <laughs> you know, certain things did. But they haven't done as they have done in these last days where sin is reaching its peak. Okay? That's the big difference. Now, uh, Pastor Rice, he says, if the prophets and the Savior had not foretold these activities for this exact time period, I wouldn't think anything of it, he said. But since Yahweh inspired his prophets to foretell of these activities for these last days, along with the famines, the disease epidemics, and the nuclear wars, you should be aware that we see all of these things in this time period, okay? Because these things had never taken place before, okay? And has it been earthquakes? Sure, there's been earthquakes ever since, the, you know, the earth was created probably, you know? because of the, Teutonic, the tectonic plates and so forth. However, it's because of man's sins that the scripture tells us and the prophecies have written that as sin increases, that's what causes these things to take place in a more and more drastic and more frequent uh, times. And the intensity of them is increasing as well. In fact, they're having earthquakes where you know, they wouldn't even, they never even thought about having earthquakes before. They're having storms where they never thought about having storms before. Twisters and so forth. You know, who, who ever heard of, a, you know, a tornadoes hitting in New York City, you know? And yet it's occurred in the past couple of years, you know? Past two years. Okay, so he writes, he says, it's in, Yah in Yahweh's plan is life and peace. That's what he desires for. And he offers mankind. Yet, Yahweh has allowed wars to take place so that mankind can learn that without the laws of life and peace, there can be no peace. Okay, that, and that's the reason why, you know, because the world, the people think, you know, well, why, you know, if there is a God up there, you know, well, why does he allow this? You know, why does he allow babies to be aborted and people to be die and this, that, and other, and wars to break out and all of this? It's because he allows these things because... He knows man. He knows what's in the heart of man. And he knows that if these things were not allowed, mankind would never learn the lesson of what their sin actually brings. And it's, it's the result of sin that causes these things to take place, which we'll see a little bit later. But he goes on and he says, um, From the beginning, Yahweh showed mankind the way to true peace, joy, love, and abundant living. A life without sickness, disease that causes confusion, hatred, wars, famines, and earthquakes. Now notice, this is diseases that causes these things. Um, he says, Yahweh says, within this plan that mankind must choose which way of life 
he desires, either Yahweh's way, which leads to eternal life, or their own way, under the guidance of Satan, the devil, which leads to death. Okay? And that's the whole point that Yahweh is trying to do. When the scripture says that Yahweh pleads with all flesh, he tries to show them that there's a choice that needs to be made in life. Either you choose Yahweh's way, which is the way, as Yeshua said, that you can have abundant living. He didn't say you were given all the luxuries in life. But he said you can enjoy life abundantly. Or you can have the ways of, that leads to death, which people suffer with the misery of, of the, the lifestyles in which they leave, live, which brings about the sickness and diseases and the death and so forth and tremendous suffering that takes place. You know, we all suffer from the curses of sin, from our past. Even though we come in Yahweh's house and, you know, we convert our ways, we still suffer from the sins of our past because that's the curses. A curse caused us doesn't come, okay? There's always a reason for a curse. And we suffer with those things. Even the children who are born in the house of Yahweh, they're still born with STDs. They're still born with problems. However, the righteousness that the parents show towards them and teaching them and leading them and guiding them and the efforts that the children themselves make to want to be right, that's what keeps these STDs from coming forth. Yahweh holds them back and he doesn't allow them to... Uh, run their course to where it brings death, misery, and suffering, and so forth. That's the difference between us and the world. But the whole world is defiled. But we are being cleansed by Yahweh. And that's a great blessing that we have. Now, it's within Yahweh's plan to accept as his own those who choose to live by those laws and, uh, and repent of sin. And that choice is given to every individual. And, and they, those who do choose to live as Yahweh teaches are promised eternal jobs in the, or positions and authority in Yahweh's everlasting kingdom. It's not like we're going to be, you know, bossing people around and so forth. But we will have that authority. Then. That authority, authority and character and power. Okay, that's all the same meaning. It's all the same word. But... To have the, the authority means you have, you have the ability to be able to say or do or promote something because no one can come against you. The power to be able to do it will be that you will have the power to make sure that it comes to pass and nothing will stop that. The character, though, is what will, is what will lead and guide and direct you to do what is right so that you will always be doing the righteous thing. You will never, ever choose to do something that will harm another individual or someone else's property throughout all eternity. Okay? Because you keep the laws of Yahweh. And it's the laws of Yahweh that builds that character that actually will give you the authority. And that's why it says in Revelation, you know, he who enters into the kingdom, it says you will be able to have the right to enter into Yahweh Shema. Well, you have that right, and it's a twofold meaning because you have the, the, the authority to do so, and then you have the right or the privilege to actually be there to be able to perform those duties. And that's what Yahweh is working with us about. And that's what he, he's doing. He's choosing us right now. But he's, he's leaving that choice up to us because that's how loving Yahweh is. You know, Yahweh does not force himself upon us. It's like the old saying goes, well, you know, to teach a child to stay away from a hot stove, you build a fire and you get it, start getting a little hot, a little warm to where it's be discomfort to them but not burn their hands. You know, if they, sure enough, you let them alone, they're going to go up there and touch it. It's the core of the mind that takes over and they're going to go up there and touch it. Well, then they finally realize when they touch it that, hey, that burns. I don't want to do that no more. And their mind learns, okay? But that was an experience that they went through. And there's no saying in the world that experience is the best teacher. You know, well, it's not. You know, Yahweh says choose beforehand because you don't have to go out and catch an STD to know that, hmm, maybe fornication is wrong. You know, the, the laws of Yahweh teach us what to do. And Yahweh's trying to show us that he, he's choosing those who will make the right choices. Because choosing what to do, what is right, puts that character within a person. 
And Yahweh's reputation is on the line. Okay? Yahweh's reputation is on the line throughout the entire universe. And he's proving to the universe that we are capable of making righteous choices. And that's what he desires in us. And that's what he said in the very beginning when he says, that I'll make man in my image and my likeness. Now remember what was written in Yachanan 1.1. Because the apostle stated that in the beginning was the plan of Yahweh. So therefore in the beginning was Yahweh had the plan for eternal life. Because the choice is ours. You know, you have the right to choose. And in Matthew 4.4, 4, Yeshua said, It is written that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of Yahweh. Okay? You don't live by just the, the daily needs of food. The Day of Atonement proves that. Anybody die over the Day of Atonement because they didn't eat a meal? You know? So it's not the food, it's not the physical food that we need to stay alive. Because with Yahweh, he teaches us the foods that we need to eat to keep us alive. And therefore, if we eat the proper foods, our bodies will receive the proper nutrition that will keep us alive. Many people eat forbidden foods. They're not food. They call it food. Okay. Crawfish is not food, but they call it food, you know, like seafood and so forth. It's not an actual food because Yahweh didn't make it as a food for mankind to eat. He said, don't touch it, don't eat it, okay, because it's going to bring sickness upon your body. Now, people eat that stuff and they'll say, hey, don't bother me, I eat pork chops every day of my life. Maybe they eat bacon every morning, okay, and they appear to be healthy. But their bodies are being destroyed. At any moment, they could wake up any day feeling as healthy as they possibly can. And an hour later, they could be killed over dead because of a heart attack or anything else. And it was all brought about because of their disobedience by the choices that they made, by the foods that they ate. And so this is why Yeshua said, we don't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of Yahweh. We have to let the law of Yahweh guide us. In Matthew 5, 10, he said, Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness. Because it is righteous to do Yahweh's laws. It's righteousness to keep Yahweh's laws. But you're going to be persecuted for us. Because, you know, if you work around certain people, you know, they may pick on you because of the fact that, hey, you know, why won't you eat this? Okay, and you'll have to stand up to say, you know, resist it. No, I don't want it. But to see, what drives you to that point? It's because you've been taught by Yahweh's laws, and that's what guides you to resist that. Don't eat it. You know? Because the thing is, with unclean foods, especially the seafood and so forth, it's the seasoning that, that, that gives it any kind of a taste to begin with. Because it, it, it's a bland-tasting food without those seasonings that are put in there. So Satan tempts the people by making it smell great and all this kind of stuff. And that's what enhances the, the, the flavor of it and so forth. And, and tempts the people to break these laws. This is why the prophets wrote about these things. Where he said, you know, they, they, they follow the priests that go and they eat the swine's flesh and the abominations it's in, the, in the secreted places of the gardens, you know. They taught these things because for one thing they had to start teaching them in secret to begin to break away from keeping Yahweh's laws to begin with or otherwise, you know, they would have suffered the consequences. And now it's made open because now it's spread so much to where it's completely around the whole world. So blessed are those who would do righteousness. But theirs, for theirs is the kingdom of Yahweh, he says. Now notice the word righteousness. It's um, in the beginning, Yahweh's law, Yahweh gave us his laws of righteousness. So the laws that teach us righteous behavior and promised eternal life to those who would practice these laws. In 1 Yachanan 3, verses 7 and 8 and 10 and 11, he says, Little children, let no man deceive you. Okay, because that means somebody can deceive you. But he says, let no man deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous, just as he is righteous. If you practice righteousness, you're going to be righteous. You can't help but be righteous if you keep those laws that show you what righteousness is. But it's practice. It's making that choice and practicing those things. 
But he who commits sin is of the devil. Because the devil sinned from the beginning. And in the beginning was the word of Yahweh. Remember, everything was done according to the plan of Yahweh. Yahweh actually allowed these things to take place. Because he wasn't going to force his wife to keep, them his, keep his laws. You know, he's not a forceful creature. He allowed her to do these things. He knew that she could make the choice. And he left it up to her. But in this, the children of Yahweh and the children of the devil are made manifest. Whosoever will practice righteousness is of Yahweh. And he who breaks the laws is of the devil. For this is the message that you heard from the beginning. From the very beginning. That you should love one another. From the beginning. From Genesis. From the very beginning of mankind. When the earth was made. He says you should know this because this law was from the beginning that you should love one another one another that's what atonement's about too is loving one another being at one with Yahweh okay you can't be at one with Yahweh if you don't love your neighbor as you love yourself and as the scripture says no one goes around thinking saying that they hate themselves you know even people who do damage to their bodies and stuff they do it for attention there's a reason behind it but you know, the attention that Yahweh wants to give us is that he loves us so much that he's willing to actually transform our minds into the way that he thinks, the way that he acts. And from the beginning, we were taught to love one another. Now Cain, Cain was taught that, but Cain made the choice not to go that way. Abel made the choice to follow that way and to love one another. And because of that, you know, he was at one and he was able to make atonement because being at one with Yahweh and being at one with your brother is complete unity. But you can't have one without the other. You can't say you love Yahweh if you hate your brother because Yahweh judges the heart and he knows. And there's nothing that, as the scripture says, there's nothing that will, be, that will not be revealed. Okay. Now, in Yachanan 1 1, he says, In the beginning was the plan of Yahweh. And that plan was with Yahweh. And the plan was Yahweh. So it shows the ownership of who this plan belonged to. In Genesis 1 1, it says, In the beginning, Yahweh created the heavens and the earth. The same beginning, the Genesis that we're talking about here. And then in verse 26, he says, Then I'm going to make man in my image, and he will have rulership. But the only way he's going to have that rulership is to be righteous and follow these laws that I have given unto him. Now, we started off talking about the fact that this is talking about Pentecost, which is a shadow of protection, that Yahweh's feasts are a shadow of protection. Now, when the world goes the opposite way, you know, today, society, they've gone the way of Cain, of course, and they practice um, his ways, they practice sin, which brings about sickness, disease, confusion. You know, and, and the violence and the hatred that we see in the world, throughout the world. These things are all practice. That's why the scripture says it should not be once named among the saints to be those ways. The word confusion, some of the meanings of the word confusion, this is according to the thesaurus. Um, confusion means complexity, difficulty. You know, when you have difficulty with somebody, there, there's confusion that is there because, you, you know... Yahweh is not the author of confusion. So that shows us right there that we made a choice somewhere. It means mistake. Also, uh, bewilderment, turmoil, tumult, agitation, emotional upset. These are just some of the things that confusion. And this is just some of the things that come about from people in the world eating the wrong thing, which causes their minds and their bodies to react this way. But with Yahweh's people, it comes about as well. However, it's not because we eat the wrong thing. It's because we make the wrong choice. Now, in today's society, uh, you know, people suffer these things all over the place. And of course, this is passed on as the scripture says when third and fourth generation is passed down. Um, but if you remember now, these things are brought about and Yahweh tells us that 
It's going to come about in the time period when things are at its worst. Yeshua talked about that as well. And who knows what the, the, the next confused mind, you know, could do. They could, they could, you know, pull the trigger for the nuclear wars and so forth, the nuclear bombs destroyed, whatever. Because their minds are so messed up and they, all they think about is retaliation against one another. They don't have that love for one another. In the beginning, remember what we just read? In the beginning, it was taught to love one another. Now, in Revelation 7, remember it talks about, it says, I saw these four messengers standing on the four corners of the earth. And he says... You know, tells them, hurt not the earth, nor the sea, nor the green trees or anything that is in them. Why would they want to hurt? It's because of their lifestyles that they're living. It's because of the confusion of breaking Yahweh's laws that's leading them in that area. The scripture says that they will repent. Of course, the quartet will eventually repent along with the two billion that is, that is going to be called out. But right now, it's the confusion of these laws that's in their minds that is causing them to react to this point, which is eventually going to bring about nuclear war. But as Pastor Rice he says, don't let these false, sarcastic religious or religions deceive you. Righteousness is practicing Yahweh's laws. If you don't practice, then you sin and you belong to Satan. Okay? And that's the thing is that's what this world don't understand is they belong to Satan because Satan has the whole world deceived. It's only those in the house of Yahweh who belong to Yahweh. The rest of this world belongs to Satan. They're servants to whom you obey, Yeshua said. In fact, that's what the, the whole law of Yahweh, the law and the prophets are all based upon that, that you belong to whom you obey. If you obey Satan, you belong to Satan. If you obey Yahweh, you belong to Yahweh. And that's why he's given us these things. That's why it talks about Pentecost is a shadow of protection because Yahweh's laws show us that if we keep these laws, then they show us how we can become like Yahweh. And that's why Yahweh gives us the seventh day. You know, we have a, a, a clock in our bodies that regulates our entire bodies, you know, as we are, our bodies are, are as built as a, as a computer, you know, in, in the, the most fascinating computer in, in, in all the, the world, you know, is not, not even compared to our bodies. And our bodies are electrical and the cells and everything and everything that, that goes on. And if you remember too, uh, like Pastor said, the foods are electrical, okay? And those foods feed the right amount of charge to our bodies to where when we take in these molecules from the foods that we eat, they're charged, they're electrically charged, and they react with our cells and cause this generation of electricity to run our bodies properly, to give us the amount of energy that we need and so forth. But if we do something to distract and interrupt that flow of current, then we get sick or we get confused and our bodies and our minds get messed up and we make the wrong choices in the things that we do. But we see the world, that's the way that the world is right now, is that they've made those choices and they brought the world to the way, in the situation in, in the way it's, it's at right now. And there's nothing that can turn it around. Nothing that Yahweh would allow to turn it around at this time, okay? When the proper time comes, Yahweh's going to show them how easy it is to turn all this around and to completely rebuild the entire earth and get rid of all of this stuff, all of the problems that they've caused and brought upon this earth to begin with. But it's not time yet. Now, remember, the protection, as we find in, in Revelation 7, verse 9, it says, After this I looked, and behold, a great multitude, which no man can number, of all nations and tribes and peoples and tongues, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and with palm branches in their hands. Now, why the palm branches? Well, this is the point of keeping Yahweh's feast, which is his everlasting appointments, okay? Remember, Leviticus 23 tells us about the Feast of Tabernacles, which is coming up, and the branches and so forth. And this is why at the feast time, we hold the palm branches and we wave the palm branches. This is the reason why a pastor gets up here and waves the palm branches to us. It's not because he just wants to, you know, swirl these things around that it's fun to do, there's a reason behind it, okay? 
Everything that we do, there's a reason behind it. And these palm branches, as he waves these palm branches, it's a remembrance before Yahweh. It's not like Yahweh meeting these guys, hi Yahweh, you know. He doesn't need a wave. But Yahweh has reminders. That's why he's got the, the menorah as a reminder. And the Malachim need that too. Now, keeping these feasts is what gives us the protection that Yahweh says will come upon this earth when the time comes for these bombs to take place, these wars, these nuclear wars to take place. But of course, um, you know, they want to do away with it. The Catholic popes, you know, they've changed this and they've even issued death penalties to destroy people if they kept the Sabbath day. Remember the prophet Daniel, he wrote in 7 verse 25, and he will speak great words against Yahweh and will wear out a mentally attack and cause to fall away the saints of Yahweh and to think to change the feasts, the holy days, and the laws that would be given to his hand to a time, times, and dividing of time. So we know, even through their own admittance, the church admits, the Catholic Church admits that they have changed these laws. And they say, we have the authority to do so. But, Yahweh says differently. In Malachi, chapter 4, verse 2, he says, But for you who reverence my name, the light of righteousness will arise with healing in its wings, and you will go forth like calves leaping from the stall. That shows the tremendous joy that there is in, in keeping Yahweh's laws. Verse 3, And the wicked, the wicked will be trotted down, for they will be ashes under the soles of your feet. In that day that this is done, says Yahweh. Now remember, this is a, a judgment that's already been put forth in the heaven, in the heavenly courts. It's a judgment that's already been placed that this is what must take place in order to fulfill Yahweh's plan and bring it about. So these nuclear wars are prophesied. This is why Yahweh allowed the prophets to be inspired to write upon, about these things. They, didn't, they, they knew great destruction was going to come and that there would be fire and pillars of smoke and so forth, but they didn't understand what would cause those things. They didn't understand how it could actually take, a play, take place. And this is why Daniel drove him crazy. And he wanted to know, what does this mean? But it wasn't for him to know. And Yahweh just told him, said, Daniel, it's not for you. It's for the end time. It's not meant for you to understand these things. Because if he had known, and people could understand that, it would have changed Yahweh's plan. Okay? And, and it wouldn't have worked. That's why, you know, Noah, the flood came about and so forth, because at that time, technology was advanced to a certain extent. But Yahweh had to hold it back and bring him back down so his plan would come to pass. And Yahweh never steps in unless mankind tries to interfere with his plan. And then he has to do something about it. But he goes on, he says, Now remember the laws of Moshe. So if the laws of Yahweh were done away with, why does he tell us to remember the law? So all Christianity says, Oh, that old law is done away with. That's why they don't like reading the Old Testament. That's why you have New Testament churches. And they always concentrate on the New Testament. They don't like to read the Old unless it can benefit their church for some reason. Then, then the preacher might go back and read something out of the Old Testament that he can use that points towards something he needs, like maybe a fundraiser or something. But they stay away from the prophets' writings because they know that it tears them down and it exposes their sin. And they don't want that. And they won't teach their congregation these things. And so they have no understanding because they don't seek the law and the prophets. But these, these, these feast days are a shadow of protection from the things to come, as the scripture says. Now, in this last days, we're on page 7 here. And the shadow of protection from things to come. The last day's time period is spoken of many times in the prophets uh, of your Bible. These prophecies start in Genesis with the prophecy about the Savior 
and Yahweh's last day's work of the two witnesses, the Savior Yahshua and the high priest over the work. In Hebrews 10, verse 23 and 25 to 27, he says, And having a high priest over the house of Yahweh, not forsaking the gathering of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, so much more as we see the day approaching. Okay, the gathering of ourselves together. That's the Yahweh Sabbath and Yahweh's feast times to come together. Whatever opportunity we have, the new moons and so forth. And encouraging one another, notice. As the, the more we see the day approaching, the more we should be encouraging one another. For if we sin willfully, after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice of sins. In other words, if we know and accept Yeshua as our sacrifice, but then we willingly turn against and go opposite of what we've been taught, and, the, and, and go opposite, opposite of the example that Yeshua set for us, there's no sacrifice for our sins because we, we, we're doing away with them. You know, and the thing is, is that Yeshua, Yeshua can be sacrificed twice. It's once and for all. So, he says, there no longer remains the sacrifice of sins, but a certain, a certain fearful expectation of judgment and fiery indignation which will devour the adversaries. Now, that's what Yahweh says is going to take place. And these nuclear bombs are going to darken the sun, burn the earth, and cause it to be real to and fro, back and forth, as the scripture says. You know, we've already seen uh, a shift in the magnetic poles, which, you know, of course, they try to explain everything away because they say every so often it occurs, which it does, but it is just another sign of the things that are taking place. And Yahweh's the only power. See, he is the only power that's capable of saving or protecting anyone from the horrors of the things that's to come. This is why we have to put our trust in Yahweh, because we have to trust in him and put our full trust in Yahweh, because what are you going to do? If you walked out on the street and someone pulled a gun and stuck it to your head, what are you going to do? That's what we have to think about. We have to let Yahweh have control. We are not in control. There's nothing that we can do to change Yahweh's plan. And when we fight against what Yahweh plans for us in our lives... We only push against him. We fight against him. We fight against his will. But we have to put our complete trust in him. And sometimes people don't do that. Or sometimes it's a halfway thing. Well, I trust in Yahweh, but what if? See, and it opens the, wind, the, the, it opens the door for doubt to come in, okay? And we have to trust in, law, in Yahweh and, and realize that Yahweh is in control. There is nothing that takes place in our lives that Yahweh doesn't have control over. Everything. Now, Yahweh has his protection, but his protection is conditional. You know, he will he will even fight our battles for us. But that's if we practice his laws of righteousness. Then he can fight our battles. And, and oddly enough, you know, Yahweh's condition for protection is shown by the same prophets that our forefathers rejected. They rejected everything that was shown to them that they could have had. And, and be, as a result of that, the 12 tribes of Israel began to introduce this God worship, which eventually spread throughout all the known world that we know of right now. And that's why people are keeping these pagan holidays and so forth. But this is something that the prophets fought with hundreds and thousands of years ago. It's to try and not let the people persuade you. Remember what we read earlier? It said, let no man deceive you. Because people are out there to deceive. The whole world is out there to deceive because they belong to Satan. You, you belong to whom you obey. Satan has the whole world deceived. And we've got to put all those scriptures together, all those prophecies together, and, and you realize how blessed you are to be a part of Yahweh's house. And it's not something that we can take for granted. 
Now, in first, you know, the prophet Samuel, he, he had to put up with this stuff too. But he told them how to come out of this. In, in 1 Samuel 7, verse 3, it says, Then Samuel spoke to all the house of Israel, saying, If you are returning to Yahweh with all of your hearts, then rid yourselves of the gods and the Asherah, or the, the goddess Asherah, among you. Commit yourselves to Yahweh, preparing your hearts and worship and serve him only. Then he will deliver you from the hands of the Philistines. See, Yahweh always use these things that take place to get the people's attention, to make them realize that, hey, you've got to put your trust in Yahweh. When they put their trust in Yahweh, even at the time of Moshe and Yeshua, when they put their trust in Yahweh, in the judges that he lifted up, they would deliver him out of it. But then once they began to lose that trust in Yahweh, then they fell. And for a time period, he let them go. And then he raised somebody else back up. But he was trying to show them the lesson that this is what occurs when the righteous teachers are not there. You've got to have someone who guides you. That's why, that's why the eunuch told Philip that. Well, how can I understand these things unless someone teaches me? Now, and then in verse 6 of 1 Samuel 7, he says, So they gathered together as Mizpah, Mizpah, that means to watch between you and me. Um, they drew water and poured it out in front of Yahweh. On that day they fasted, and, they were, and there they confessed, We have sinned against Yahweh. And Samuel was judge of Israel at Mizpah. We have sinned against Yahweh. So they realized it, and they confessed it. They realized what their wrong was. They realized they had been fooling around and worshiping these goddesses, the Asherahs and so forth. Okay, and worshiping the queen of heaven. Even back in Samuel's day. And so he says, if you're serious about repenting, then put all these things away from you. Get completely away from it. Now these same conditions that Yahweh set for the tribes of Israel, it's the same conditions for us today. It's no different. We have to come out of God worship completely. And, and, and when you think of, of God worship... Long ago, <laughs> Pastor gave a, a bunch of sermons. These are the old ones. And he talked about God worship. And he kept emphasizing God worship, God worship, God worship, the worship of the Elohim and so forth. And he gave a series of sermons on that. And to realize what God worship is, and who these gods are, and what they have done, and what they have done to mankind, they have done to Yahweh because they're trespassing upon his property and influencing the lifestyles of these people and so forth. But God worship is anything that's not, that is not of Yahweh's righteousness, of his laws. And the world doesn't understand that because they don't even know what a God is. I mean, they worship God. They have no earthly idea what it means to worship God. To them, God worship is righteousness. Just as the prophet said, they call evil righteousness and righteousness evil. You know, they, they, it's not even entering into their mind what this means. But Yahweh has given us the understanding to know. And so the prophet Samuel said, get all of these things out of your life. So the, the things that we see today, by the way, you know, I, I was in the store the other day. I couldn't believe it. This was last week. I walked into a garden section. You know what they had there? Christmas trees with lights on them. We haven't even got close enough. This, this, was, this was last month in September. We hadn't even entered into the month of October when they're going to start celebrating the damnable Halloween. And they were set up for Christmas at that time. Walk through and there's the aisle with all the Christmas decorations. They keep, the merchants keep getting earlier and earlier and earlier. Remember, it used to be you'd start seeing them around the Thanksgiving time. That's when they'd start, you know, the day after Thanksgiving is the day, the big day to start, you know, they're shopping for Christmas. And now they keep promoting it earlier and earlier and earlier. So this is becoming a lifestyle. It's like the old saying, you know, uh, Christmas in July, well, soon it would be that way. If mankind could continue on, they'd move it up to that time period and it would be the whole year around. 
these same customs, these heathen customs, which twist the minds of the people and pull them away. They want you to look at those Christmas trees, and they say, oh, the Christmas tree points upward. So it points towards God. Okay? But the lights on them, they want you to think that that's the light of salvation. It's to keep these days. Whereas the light, is the, the true light is the laws of Yahweh. Just the opposite. It shows how Satan twists these things and counterfeits these things. So by doing that, of course, they lose the protection of Yahweh by doing that. And the prophet Samuel warned him, don't do that. Now, in Acts 3.19, remember it says, Repent, therefore, and be converted, so that your sins can be blotted out, because there's no other way that you can blot them out. And that the time of refreshing may come from the presence of Yahweh. That means to repent of the gods and the God worship and the worship, of course, of the Queen of Heaven because Yahweh's not a god. He's not a goddess. He's never been called any of that. He is the only source of power in the universe. And that's what the prophet Samuel showed us. That if you want to repent of your sin, you've got to get rid of these things. And of course, that's why they killed Yachanan because Yachanan stood up for these things as well. You know, the Pharisees, they moved their headquarters to Rome, and they changed their name to Catholic just to, to try and hide their past, just like they hide the past of what, what is Rome, you know, the beginning of Rome. How did Rome start up? Well, I don't know. It's a mystery, you know. Well, of course it is, because it's the mystery religion. Everything about this system is a mystery. I mean, why would anyone want to get drunk? Can anybody answer that? Why would anyone want to get drunk? Why would anyone want to do drugs? It doesn't make any sense that you would want to willingly do it. And you don't. But it's the influence that influences the core of the minds to drive a person to do that. Because I don't think a sane person would think, I'm going to get so drunk that I can't stand up and I can't even remember a thing that I did tonight and then I'm going to get out on the highway and drive home. <laughs> yeah. When well, you don't even remember what you did. That's not normal thinking. You know, it's not the brain that Yahweh gave us. But because the spirit world is so strong, especially now when it comes about the Halloween time and so forth, the influence of the, of the, takes the mind and it twists the mind to where it doesn't think rationally. So in their own mind, they don't even realize that they're breaking these laws of Yahweh and they by no means have the capability of understanding that the law of Yahweh would keep them from danger. That it's a form of protection to keep these laws that offer protection. But one day they'll have their minds open. We're going to do that. We're going to open up their minds and teach them and show them. Well, Yachan and, and the prophets, you know, that they... they they met this opposition from the people because they didn't hold back. You know, I mean, they told, them, they told them their sins. They told them like it was. Same as we see Pastor doing today. You know, when Yahweh inspires a person to, to do something, they ain't going to back down. You know, they're going to do and they're going to accomplish. When Yahweh says, I've inspired this person to do this and they're going to do it, they're going to do it. You're going to see it come to pass. And of course, remember, because it says, he who overcomes will have uh, all, of, all of these things. Now, let's see, on page 11 here, it talks about the protection. And the shadow of Yahweh is shown by the apostles to be Yahweh's feast days. And of course, they were changed by those who murdered the prophets. And they murdered them because, you remember, like it said, Satan was a murderer from the beginning. And in the beginning is when we were told to love your neighbor as yourself. So that we would always be at one with Yahweh. So when that law of not being at one with Yahweh is broken, that's where the hatred comes in. That's where the confusion of the mind comes in. <clears throat> and that's why Satan confuses the mind to begin with. That's why she offers that lifestyle. Because once she gets a hold to a person's mind and begins to twist it and mold it the way she wants it, she knows that person can't come out of it. They cannot come out of her grip. She's got them. And she's got them just what she wants. And she can throw them to the side and go after someone else. And once she confuses the minds of a person, that's it. They're confused. It's only Yahweh who can call a person 
and open their mind and allow them to have the understanding of what his laws mean. And then when you, that occurs and you understand, then you, you want to repent. You're sorry for what you did. You want to repent. And then you want to change so you can become like God. And then you begin to develop that love for yourself. You begin to develop that love for your neighbor as yourself. And then you become together as one. Loving Yahweh and loving your neighbor as one. And that's why it says all the 613 laws, like Yeshua said, are summed up in these two. They all hang upon loving Yahweh and loving your neighbor as yourself. On these hang all the 613 laws, Yeshua said. Because he knew that plan. He knew he understood what it was in the beginning. So these religions... They've worked for years, of course, to try to discourage everyone from keeping Yahweh's laws. But the Savior said that the will of Satan, they would do. Remember, he even says in Revelations that they're not going to repent. They're going to go their own ways, and they're going to bring this destruction upon this earth. But Yahweh says, if you keep my feast, then you will have this protection. Because it's the protection of Yahweh that allows us to be able to live and to grow as he is. Yeah, it's a promise that he's given us. He said, I will protect you. He didn't say we would never be sick, did he? He never said we would never have, be without money, or be without clothes, or be without food, or whatever. He didn't promise any of that. But he also says, I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor seed begging for bread. So he's going to take care of us. He will give us our needs of what we have need of. And he gives us these things, and then we have appreciation for these things. <clears throat> and he always provides our needs. However, he's not going to give us salvation. You know, that's what the churches say. Oh, salvation is a free gift. What is a gift? A gift is something that you give to someone. And Yahweh will give us eternal life. Everlasting life. But he makes a provision. He says, I'm going to freely give this to you if you do this. So if we make that covenant with Yahweh, which is what we do at baptism, we make a covenant with Yahweh and says, Yahweh, we will keep your laws so that we will show you and prove to you our love to you and our love for our fellow man so that we can have eternal appointments with you forever. Because that's why we keep this, the feast now. We show him our desire to want to be in that kingdom and to keep these everlasting appointments with him. So when we make that covenant, then we enter into that vow with him that we're going to become like him. And when we gather together on the Sabbath and we gather together at the feast days, that's when all the teaching, teachings come out to teach us to become like Yahweh. How we can become. It's not a bunch of preaching at the churches. You know, anybody can preach to somebody. But at the house of Yahweh, you get teaching. Okay? You get the teachings of the laws that will help you to, to actually become like Yahweh. Not just to tell you about Yahweh, but to tell you how you can become like Yahweh. And that's what Yahweh is trying to do. That's what he's doing with us now with our, our DNA and so forth. Because he's causing us to become like him. Now, the world, of course, is going the way of the kings of the east. And, of course, we see that it's, it's very near. You know, Pastor writes here, he says, There are a lot of scriptures that must be understood before one can understand the prophecies. Not that you can, you know... The world can't understand that's written here a little and there a little. They, they, to them, that's taking things out of context. You take a little bit out of context here and take a little bit out of context there. So you got a little bit here and a little bit there. Throw it together and then they have other confusion. But he says it's worth the efforts to learn these prophecies and the cause of the destruction that's brought by the war raging religions, the kings of the east. The prophecies show that there's no salvation in these religions. But now there's an end in sight. An end that the kings of the east will bring by their destruction or through through their destruction as well. Now, there's always been large numbers of people, you know, the 12 tribes, and these violent men have always grown, you know, ruthless men like the Nimrod system as, as they follow these ways. And they've always forced their way onto mankind. 
They, they force them to believe a certain way under the penalty of death. And the religious view, of course, was uh, like believing the Nimrod system, you know, building these temples, building these kingdoms to honor their gods, building the schools of higher learning and so forth to teach them the ways of these god worship. So that, you know, and all of this is, and you can see this, you are servants to whom you obey. By these people building these schools and becoming these, quote unquote, professors, and the scripture says that we are professors, doesn't it? We are professors of the faith. But these are professors of higher schools of higher education. But everything that they teach there is against Yahweh. It's, it's against his law. It's, it's how to get around the laws of Yahweh. <coughs> you want to get rich? You have that lustful desire in you to cover what you don't have? You go to school. That's a big racket. You know, when, when, they, when they go to these schools, you have, to, you have a certain curriculum that you have to take, which means you're going to have certain books. It used to be that you could buy your books, you could use them, and you could sell them to somebody else for the next semester. No more. They take the books and they just make simple, a few simple changes so they can resell that book new. And you can't use your old books in class because if you want to learn what they're teaching, you've got to buy the new books. And so it's a continual way to keep people in bondage, that they keep having to spend money and money and money and more and more and more and more to where by the time that they're finished, you know, they owe tens, some people thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt before they even get out. This is the reason why things are so high priced. This is why when somebody has to go to a doctor, there's no such thing as an old country doctor that will put a, a Band-Aid on you or somebody you can go to to fix a broken bone or, or sew you up when you need stitches and so forth. Instead, they'll bring you into a room that you need x-rays and all kinds of tests. You know, and you walk out of there and, and a, a simple cut could cost you three to $5,000 or more. And then if you go into the wrong time, you may end up catching some kind of disease that was in there and end up even with even more trouble. So it's all money-making thing, but they have to do that. They have to charge these outrageous prices. You know, I think, I remember last time, I mean, this was years ago, I think they charged you like 50 or 60 bucks for an aspirin in a hospital. But they do that to cover the cost because the expenses are so much, and especially like to pay their doctors. The doctors have to spend so much money in education to be able to go and to get a job that they have to have outrageous prices to push all this. So the whole thing is based. But you see in Brother says in Revelation about it, it's the merchants of the earth that will be crying out. No one will buy our merchandise anymore. And they'll be in pain and suffering and so forth as they see the Babylonian system crumble. But it's all based upon the queen of heaven worship. You remember the, the, uh, the prophet Uremia? He talked about Christmas. And, and in Uremia 10, he says, verse 1, he says, Hear the word that Yahweh speaks concerning the house of Israel. Now notice, it's the house of Israel. He's speaking to the 12 tribes here. And he's talking about the customs of Christmas as they go out and they cut down a Christmas tree, you know, and they bring it into into the house and they decorate it with their silver and gold and all of these things. It's very descriptive what Yahweh shows you in the scriptures concerning these things. And yet people, you know, they just overlook it and try and play it down, especially those who don't want, you know, don't want to admit that they're sinning. Well, that was just an idol. You know, they went out into the forest and they cut down this tree and they brought it into their home and it became an idol. What do you think your Christmas tree is? You know, it's exactly what he's talking about. It describes it in exact detail. It even described the prophets, even talked about the, 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 uh, the false Christmas trees, you know, the, 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 uh, the metal ones and so forth. You know, it talks about that even. So all of these things are described. Of course, it all came about to, remember, it, it, it got to the point where people began to remove the name of Yahweh. Why did they do that? Well, we know that it got to the point, even in modern times, which repeated itself when the Vatican, remember, gave that directive Yahweh is inappropriate for liturgical use. Say the name no more. You know, don't use that name in these last days. Of course, they know the reason why. 
Because remember, the prophet Yahil said, anyone who calls upon the name of Yahweh can be delivered. If they are delivered because they call upon the name of Yahweh, then that means Satan won't have a hold of them. But if they don't, she doesn't have a hold of them, then she can have them in the control. You know, if, if she continues to, to uh, keep them deceived where they won't have the opportunity to even realize and have that understanding that they're, they're being used by her. Now, the same people who killed the prophets, they were, the, the prophets were sent to warn the people, you know, that, that there's no salvation in what they were teaching. That they had to repent, they had to turn to Yahweh. And these same religions that came against them, they turned to these sexual perversions and spread this wickedness throughout the land of Israel and eventually throughout the world. And, and this was a religion. This is a form of, of God worship. It's a religion that they, that they have perverted the mind so much to where they can't see the truth even when you present it to them. Now, this is the big difference. You know, when we in Yahweh's house, when we come here, we long to hear the word of Yahweh. We are eager to know what Yahweh's word means because we have been given that understanding, okay? The world can't see that. You can go up to someone and tell them, this is unclean. I know it's not. I watched it. So my mother told me one time, you know, when, when I was, way back when I was young, I told her, you know, uh, Mom, that's unclean. I read the whole book of Leviticus 11 to her. And she turned around and said, oh, no, it's clean. I washed it. You know, that's a, that's a concept. They only they can only hear little bits and pieces of what you say, but, but they can't have that comprehension of what it actually means. They can't understand the laws that's brought out because the laws belong to Yahweh and to those whom he will reveal those things to, remember? So we can see how blessed we are to be called with the name of Yahweh. Okay, because he's making us into himself. See? Praise Yahweh. Now, the leaders of the religion, you know, they actually used the Roman army in the time of the apostles and afterwards to make this war against Yahweh's saints. Those who would keep the laws of Yahweh, those who kept this tes the testimony of Yeshua the Savior, those who would heed these, these things, those who heeded the warning and, and, and realized the purpose for their lives, these are the ones that the, referred to as the saints that Satan went out and made war against and tried to destroy them. That was our forefathers. Those were the ones who believed. Those were the ones who risked their lives to be able to bring about these things. You know, the Kahan on Sabbath just reminded us about, think about the, the ones who were sawed in two. You know, and, and we talk about our aches and our pains at times. But these people were willing to die so that we could have the word of Yahweh. You see, and they didn't have the understanding that we have. We are in the time period where we can understand the entire plan of Yahweh. They only had bits and pieces. Some of the prophets knew that they were writing things, but they didn't have the full understanding even of what they were writing or why they were writing these things. And like it says in, in, in Corinthians, this, the word of Yahweh, was given to us. Only to us in these last days. That's why it was written. That's why all the prophets wrote everything down. This is why Abel wrote things down. For us. So that we would know these things and be able to understand these things in these last days. And that's the great blessing that we have. Pastor says this in his last thing here. He says, get this picture. We are in the end times. A time period in which the prophets show that there would be great tribulation with disease epidemics and hatred among the nations. Famine and nuclear war. It's also a time when religions would be numerous in every nation. The Holy Scriptures show that salvation is only given to those who keep the commandments. Yet none of the many, many religions throughout the world practice the Ten Commandments or teach them to the people. However, all the inspired prophets, the apostles, and the Savior show in the Scriptures that we must keep the commandments or we will perish. And remember, Yeshua said, 
talked about the children of Israel. I mean, children of Abraham. If you're Abraham's descendants, he said, then you would keep what Abraham kept. And Abraham kept the law, statutes, and judgments. That's written about him in Genesis. So these things, these same laws, these same, the, the, the same conditions for salvation back then are still for us today. The last thing here to end on page 24, he says, bloodline. Bloodline means nothing. You would you'd be well of the lineage of Abraham, Isaac, or Jacob, but unless you do the words, perform righteousness that Abraham did, you will not be born into the Yahweh family. You will be of the house of Satan. And that's a warning to all the world and to us to keep us to remembering that, you know, as Yeshua said, straight and narrow is the gate. But wide is the way to, to destruction. Satan's house is everywhere. But Yahweh's house is right in front of us in this narrow little place that we've got to squeeze into there. We've got to take the squareness and make it round and squeeze into that door like Pastor taught us, right? So let him chew us out and get all the rough edges off of us, right? So we can be smooth and squeeze into that location. May Yahweh bless you, man. If everybody please stand. Go ahead and close. Oh, clean up. There'll be clean up after class. So, man, if you just hang around, go ahead and clean up and be ready for the feast. Okay? Praise Yahweh. That means it's getting even closer, right? Heavenly Father, Yahweh, this is Cohen Michael Hawkins. Ask them to come before you with great Kohans in your house. here, the great deacons and the great men in your house, Father, and the future priests. We bless you and thank you, Father, for the opportunity we've heard uh, this night, Father, to rehearse these words of our great overseer. We thank you, Father, for the the great blessings of understanding these things and for what you have shown into us. And as you continue to work with us and continue to guide us and direct us, Father, please forgive us of our sins and our shortcomings of this past day and continue to strengthen us and help us to do better this next day, Father, that we may be found be found acceptable in your sight. Continue to guide and protect your people, give safety and, and peace and blessings to all of your people, Father, so that we can continue to prepare for the upcoming feast. And do all things, Father, in ways in which you are well pleased and that you will help us to show that love forth to our, our neighbors and as, as show the same, same love that we love ourselves and love you, Father. We bless you, we thank you, and praise you, and we ask these things in Yeshua's name and ask that you go with us in peace. Hallelujah, Yahweh.